here today for another Kickstarter critique where we take a look at a different Kickstarter tabletop game project every weekday at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Give my honest thoughts on how that project is being ran. And today, we got a Fiverr or Someone reached out to my Fiverr, which we got a link down below. And they said, hey, I want you to check out my Kickstarter. So we're here checking out Craft & Conquer Medieval, an epic strategy board game by Savage Games. Now, one thing I do want to mention is they actually had me look at their Kickstarter pre-launch page. So I shot a video before that as well. Uh, I don't really remember much about the page because honestly, once I go through a Kickstarter, I kind of just just shoot it out of my mind forever, which is why I tend not to go back and revisit them because I, I wouldn't even know what to say. I kept like, oh, they changed this because I don't remember. <laughs> but this is for two to four players, 60 to 120 minutes to play, age 14 plus. Look at the main image and see a box. See a lot of unused space here. I don't need to see your logo. Like, your logo means absolutely nothing to me because if I recall correctly, this is the first game you put out. And it's right here, and it's right here, and we're redundant, and you can put useful information in there. So that's annoying. Focusing on the minis, that's fine. It's fine. It's fine. They don't look like they're special minis or anything. They look like they're totally fine minis. Uh, as always, I'm sure as we're going through the campaign page, I'd be like, I'm sure, like... Like, there just seems to be a lot of wasted space, and we're zoomed so far out. Now I'm starting to remember things. If I recall correctly, there's a really cool system right here where your cards can be held, and there's, like, a wooden system that, like, puts – it goes into the board or something like that, which I thought was really neat. Um, but it's not really conveyed because we're zoomed so far out. I feel like we need to zoom in on something. And we did zoom in on the minis, but at the same time, the minis are – you know, there's minis everywhere, and yours don't look, like, that mind-blowing. Uh, Objective-based cards, 3D mini city building, asymmetric factions are more perfectly combined into one game. Come join the fun. All right, so we're spotlighting some of the different aspects there. That's fine. I don't know what else I'd put there, honestly. Like, that's the thing to myself. Before I criticize a marquee, I say, well, what would I put that would be different? And it's like, uh, I don't know. Got nothing. So it's fine to me. I do think uh, there's definitely wasted space here that we could have utilized for something else. As always, though, with the video, I'm thinking three things. Do I want it? Can you do it? How much is it? And why are we sitting at the 247th most popular game of all time, despite the fact we're really overfunded? Really, really overfunded at uh, 600%. Let's go. Welcome to the land of Talmera. Once lost to time, it has now been Showcasing found. cards, talking Many about components. Or, sorry. Or talking about theme while showcasing components. I always feel like that is the way to go. Don't just go straight to theme. Show me some of the game as well while you're showing me the theme. So nice. Do it, but they are leaderless, pursuing only. I think that was them trying to show me that it was asymmetric special abilities as well, because they did mention that in the marquee. Found. Many factions seek to claim or subdue it. It's just kind of showing art, though. Leaderless, pursuing only self glory. They need there we the go. King. Okay, so cool. Now I can definitely see asymmetric. You may trade in one craft point three for co for three coins with return. Gain one extra wood at the beginning of your turn. Peasants only cost one coin each. Yeah, so these sound like they're pretty different asymmetric ones too. Cool. The foretold one who would unite them all. They need you. This is craft and conquer medieval. That's what I was talking about. That was cool. Series of games. This strategy game for one to four or more players involves worker placement, soldier movement dice rolled combat mm. and more all to achieve those sought after objectives during the game you'll gather resources from settlements within your kingdom using peasants to work the land like i like all we're doing here you're not slapping me in the face with the with the nice components but just they're, they're they're seamlessly interweaved into the story of the game which i really dig so far so so really good here these resources can be used to build more settlements. I'd also love to know who they got to do their 3D rendered gameplay because it's it's very it's very nicely done. Or train your peasants mm. into soldiers, then deploying them for battle. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. Each soldier sets forth from your kingdom to engage in combat and defend against oncoming attacks. When enough craft points have been collected and resources gathered, these soldiers can follow their upgrade path. Ooh, even printed on the side there, warrior. And resources Don't see that gathered, often. These soldiers can follow. That's really nice. Follow their upgrade path. That's really nice too. Upgrading them. You got a big old board here to figure out exactly how and what they upgrade to and what they do. Good stuff. This gets me excited about the game. To improve their combat ability. 
craft points can also be used to upgrade settlements from farms to villages and quarries. Like it. Giving you more resources to use. Catan-esque, but different, obviously, but I like that. Throughout the game. The board is also unique, as the land is always changing. Game tiles can be rearranged for every playthrough, allowing for maximum replayability. How do you lay them out? I guess out? it matters because the there's trees and whatnot. You get to literally ah. reshape the land. Okay, I could see that. I, I don't know the rules of the terrain and the water and whatnot, but if you were actually setting this out piece by piece by piece and you really love this game... I think to myself like Twilight Imperium a little bit of where if you play Twilight Imperium, then you know setting up Twilight Imperium is a big deal. So I get that sort of vibe there, which is cool. That being said, it looks pretty like yeah. I'd love some more details on here, just like little details, you know. It just it looks dry. That's and what I'm trying to say. In your I conquest guess. to victory, during a turn, you will have many opportunities to foil your opponent's plans with special. Okay, so we are starting to cross into it. Typically, people say, I, I think most Kickstarter videos are roughly two minutes now. We're stretched into the 310. And so far, so good. I am interested in this game. I feel like they're doing a great job presenting the rules. But we still have an extra 115 left. Let's see how they can handle that. Because this, this is where a lot of people get into like the, the, the too much rules zone. Action cards. Some have unique ability. But it doesn't look like it, because we're pivoting to something that I didn't really know. I, I saw the objective cards from the other side, so I like this. And these are different the cards. Course of a battle, oh, those or are. Or completely changing the tide of war. But be aware, only two abilities can be held at one time. Mm. So choose wisely. It and one little thing. Just little things that they like doing here. That's a big, that's a decent sized stack right there. Showcasing the stack. Gives me the idea, asymmetry. Lots of different potential combinations that I could have in my hand. And if you play the game enough, it's like, oh, if I could get this one and this one in my hand at the same time, then this was going to be awesome. So I, I, can't, I dig it. It can be held at one time, so choose wisely. It can mean the difference between a defeat and victory. Speaking of victory, to rule the land in Craft and Conquer, you must complete objective hmm. cards that are drawn throughout the game and adapt to wherever the objectives lead you. Maybe it's crafting new soldiers, upgrading a settlement, defeating a knight, or capturing the enemy's peasants. The objectives may change over time, but the outcome is always the same. Have enough objective points at the end of the game to claim victory. So why wait? Hmm. Join in this epic strategy board game and help us develop the craft and conquer world. The more support we receive, the more we are able to create going forward with new errors and fantasy factions that will be 100% compatible with the previous versions. Oh, of so you can I remember this Kickstarter project now. I remember this Kickstarter project now for the stretch goal section. Okay, okay. Now I remember them. Mishmash them together like the medieval verse. And yeah, that one's not actually out yet, so don't get super excited. And I'm pretty sure it's not going to be a part of this expansion. Because yeah, you're like, ooh, that looks cool that I could have them versus them, and then maybe we'll get future stuff. I do like the system. And the gameplay, what they show me there, looks fun. Back us now to help us build on the world. Okay, so after the video, do I want it? Yeah, yeah, I kind of do. I'm interested. I want to know more. I think it's going to be hinged on the price here. Um, the two to four player count, that's rough. That's always rough. Just it's the most competitive player count possible in your board game, which means you really got to bring it. And this one looks fun. It looks different. It looks unique. Familiar, but different. Yeah, that's the word I was looking for. And so after the one, do I want it? Can you do it? Uh, we don't know. This is first timer, but they got the ducks in a row, right? It's funded. They reached out to me beforehand. So like, all right, we, we're talking to somebody who sees a lot of Kickstarters. We're trying to get everything good. So that's good. Hopefully we're going to have the videos down here, all that good stuff. So can you do it? Not sure yet, obviously, but we'll get to it. And I don't feel I feel like they're off to a good start on that. We're Savage Games, the son and dad doer for the Mountains of Maine. We bring our years of board game experience together with professional training, development, and engineering skills to make epic board game experiences. Let's make sure there's a clickable link that works. So it's their landing page. Cool. Fine. It's alive. That's all I want to know. Launch boom. I'd love to know what they thought about that. I'm going to guess. I'm going to guess since they're 600% uh, funded, they're probably pretty happy with it, though. Uh, but I am still curious. Why did it bump down so much to 247? Because that is really, really low on the popularity chart. Craft and Conquer Medieval, a turn-based strategy board game with crafting stuff. Things got it. Got it. Cool. 45 to two hours. That's a huge gap. I didn't really see that before, but now I see that. That makes me wonder. 
that makes me wonder. That makes me wonder if like the game's gonna drag at four players or not. Because forty five, see two hours. That's like a huge difference. Uh, these features make crafting conquer funny. So hopefully there's a gameplay video. Put my mind at ease about stuff like that. Uh, we have designed a very unique four city settlement, the city of Avalon. It is our Kickstarter exclusive. Learn more in the exclusive section. Oh. So this is something that I automatically get for backing it. I put that on the main image immediately. And that's a very common thing that a lot of people do. Why back now? Like, because you can... Because once again, looking at the main image, there's so much wasted space. So much wasted space on this main image. And if this is like a Kickstarter exclusive, I'm immediately more intrigued. You know? It just... I think it spruces it up a little bit. We're offering exclusive discounts for the core game and add-ons. Don't miss out on the opportunity to play the game with all the expansions and an unbeatable value. The extra player expansion is not currently available, but can be unlocked as part of the stretch goals at $175,000. Yeah, I remember that. I remember saying to myself, wow, that is so cart in front of the horse right there that I think it might be a turnoff to some people. Because um, if your goal is $8,500 and you're like, yeah, we're gonna, we got a stretch goal. You're like, oh, cool. What's that really important stretch goal? I think it is a really important stretch goal. Apologies for that. Apparently I got an email. Because um, going to five players, it's, that's a big deal for a lot of people at $175,000 thousand that is that is i uh, i don't even it's a lot it's a lot 10 times nearly 20 times your funding goal um hmm. but i remember it was like big slap you in the face cart in front of the horse and so now it's a little bit more like oh minor cart in front of the horse there the extra player expansion uh help bring our game let me know what you think about that in the comments below though and, and as always if you have any comments in the front end or the back end please please be sure to put them in there because once again this is a fiber order so the more that you can provide it really helps your boy out a lot <laughs> I don't know why I said your boy. I felt weird. Cringe. I don't know why I said cringe either. Oh, God. Keep going. Help us share the Craft and Conquer world and future versions of the game. With our support, we can continue to build new expansions and future eras. I got it. We understand how this whole system works. You know, it's like we get expansions. You make money, you make expansions. Actually, that's not how it works anymore. Now everybody just launches with expansions. In the depth of Talibur C, an ancient race of stuff. Things got it. Key features, primary goal of the game. I got it. You did a really great job on that video. Um explaining the video and i think whoever was the creator of that video you need if you see this creator of that video you should start putting your logo at the back end because that like there's once again 247 different projects this is 247 the, all those need videos all those need videos so I would, I would see about putting that your name on there uh, maybe it was at the end i just didn't watch the end actually i should i want to give them credit because i do like um okay there was not I checked, though. I did my due diligence. All right, beautiful stuff, things, highly detailed minis. Cool. Millimeters, inches. Love that. Uh, why does it say SG? I know that's your company's logo, but... Uh, putting your company's logo above the theme is a turnoff to, I imagine, a lot of people, myself included. Like, I love to be immersed into a game. Now, don't get me wrong. I can totally get down on a game when the theme doesn't come across well. But when the publisher intentionally does something to make the theme not come across so well, it's... I don't know. I don't think it's a good look. Unless you're going to somehow say, like, SG is, like, the name of their tribe, too, which that's neat, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. These are 3D images of the miniatures. The real-life minis will have slightly less detail due to their size. Uh, these real-life minis will have slightly less detail due to their size. Then don't put the extra details on there. Why would you... Why would... So, because I imagine, like, that was an active decision you made, right? And it, it looks like you felt the need to warn people, like, hey, by the way, they're not going to be quite this detailed. Then why make them look that detailed? Or is that just because, like, I'm just curious. Like, that is a legitimate question as to why they would do that. Um, because I am I love the fact they told people. First and foremost, that's super important. But it's just odd to me. Uh, this is not an exhaustive list. There will be a total of eight models. Some models are still under revision. The list of models will include a male and a female warrior, male and female archer, knight, boltier, champion, and catapult. Why is this so small, too? That one I feel like should totally be bigger. Like, oh yeah, more to come. Like, that feels like what you do there. Like, more to come. Maybe you're going to show them to us throughout the campaign or something like that. Get me excited to come back. Little things like that, that you can essentially spin a negative into a positive. Or or a non, and maybe it's not even a negative, just a, just a neutral thing into a positive, potentially. Dice rolled combat, words from the fans. It is all, 
It has it all. Popular mechanics like work and placement and area control and expanding modular board offering tremendous replayability and deluxe components including miniatures and wooden card holders. Can't wait to get it to the table. So this is literally like... Uh, hey, here's the mechanisms of the game. I guess they did say tremendous replayability, but that's because of the modular board. I don't know. I don't feel like, I don't feel like that quote wowed me. I do like this picture, once again. If you're a family person, you're like, okay, I can play this with my family. Family weight game. And a picture like that does a lot of the lifting. Like, you don't have to slap me in the face saying it's a family weight game. If I see kids play testing the game in any way, shape, or form, it does its job. Uh, the game looks great. I played it several times at SnowCon Gaming Convention. Even though I lost every game, I can't wait to play it again. I love the mechanics and replayability. I am looking forward to getting this game. They put together all the exciting and captivating elements of a board game needs. The game draws you to a time where wit, courage, and risk are the blah. Don't feed me in a quote. An exciting experience. Use logic, strategy, and luck to win. One of the most fun games I've ever played. Okay. They got quotes from playtesters, and they had lots of shots of playtesting. Ooh, I want to play that game. <laughs> that looks fun. Once again, I hope there's a gameplay video. What's in the box? I, if I, I've seen it before, so there probably is. Or I, I don't know. I probably mentioned it. I don't know. It's so weird. I, I checked this out like a week and a half ago, and I don't remember much of anything. My memory is so terrible. We got the long, sexy scrolling shot. Looks good. Why not a price right here? It'd be nice if you just slap me in the face with the price. 200 resources. Uh, this is, does a great job showcasing the deluxe five components. 40 peasants. Once again, those look nice. The 32 base plates. Love those. Makes it so much easier to see the different things on the board. The 32 medieval soldiers. So we got 32 minis, 24 arrow tokens, 60 coins, 125, 129 cards. Big uh, double-sided reference cards, which those look nice. You showcase those in the videos. Once again, I keep coming back to it. I feel like the video is really well done. Eight double-sided game tiles, four starting tiles. The exclusives, the City of Avalon, the thing. Cool. Uh, what is this? Exclusive review? What is this? Uh, Kickstarter exclusive. What, what is this video? I can't. The normal sediments. When you want. Exclusive review. Is this a review? sources at and you're deploying soldiers from no oh, this is a preview you're showing it to me it's not a review you're not like mm, here's what this adds to the game or what i like about it that's just a weird wording there uh because that's clearly not a review how to play uh nitpick nitpick but once again it's important to showcase the words you know if i'm clicking on that as someone who potentially wants to buy your thing it's important for me to know what it is before i get into it because if i click on it it's not what i think it is it's like oh that's annoying uh cool 45 oh that's great that's great this is a great shot right there because i even i even said that to myself what's the 40 the difference between 45 minutes and two hours that's a big difference so showcase me to me a little bit about that decide on the length of the game by choosing the number of ejected cards that must be completed this is fantastic that's a great shot right there i wonder if they had that shot beforehand i feel like i would have remembered this shot because i actually really love this idea I think more games should steal this idea. And this is why I love covering Kickstarters. Like you never know when you're going to find something that you haven't seen before. And I don't think I've seen a shot quite like this. This is fantastic. More game companies need to do stuff like this, especially when you have that wide time length. Because as a seasoned gamer, when I see 90 minutes to three hours, I say, well, those are very different things. Because when you say three hours and it's my first time playing, that actually means four and a half hours, potentially. You know, this is great information. Great information there. Uh, turn steps, things, stuff, don't care. I mean, it's good to have, but I want... Cool! Gameplay. Game walkthrough. So is that like a how to play-ish? Time, you have... Coins, and three coins is five, plus two more is seven. So it looks like if you sit down and you watch this, you're probably going to have a gist of the game. Once again, uh, man, I wish... What is Never. It? First... Oh, first two rounds walkthrough. What's your thumbnail game look like? I feel like this... Let me see what this thumbnail looks like. And I'm bad about this too, so I'm not totally knocking you here. But that's one thing, is if this... Uh, full playthrough. Oh, oh, great. Game walkthrough. Full playthrough. Okay, it's just I couldn't see it because this is right here. Okay, cool. So we full got a full gameplay. Uh, the game walkthrough. I would honestly be more honest about this, more straightforward, just say the two full turns of something like that. Because um, once again, I look at it and I can't tell it just from the Kickstarter page. Because once again, where are most people going to see this? Probably on the Kickstarter page. I can't imagine you have a huge group of people coming to your to your uh, YouTube channel. No offense, but it's just, it's just most people that see this video are going to see it right here. So letting me know that it's two full turns, that's fantastic. And honestly, 
I kind of love that because I, I, I pound my chest that a playthrough is a fantastic video to have on your thing. And it is. I will never, ever disagree with that. But I, that's not for me. I don't watch full playthroughs. And I know a lot of people don't watch full playthroughs. But a two-turn playthrough, that gets you enough so you know what the heck you're doing. That's I like that. I like that video. And I know some people already do that. But I, 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 I just talking out loud, I kind of like that. We got the rule booklet. Great. So we got gameplay. We got rule booklet. We got a two-turn playthrough, which is kind of like a mini how to play almost. And then we got the price. 89 82 Convert the currencies. That's awesome. And see, here's why I hate when people do this. I don't know why you keep the price away from the long, sexy scrolling shot. Because now I'm like, ooh, 89 Okay. You're pushing over 60 because remember 60 is MSRP. Anytime you go over 60, I'm like, all right, you got to convince me. Hey, hey there, Luke. Uh, I, I, cause it's like going back to it. Cause I remember, I do actually remember this. I said that to them. I was like, man, I don't know about that price. Cause I remember the shipping. I think we're going to get into the shipping a little bit later on and we're going to dip over a hundred bucks. I was like, man, I don't know if they, I think about that. And then I went and I looked back at all these components, 32 minis, 200 resources, 32 base plays, 40 peasants that once again, looked really cool on the board. They have their own asymmetric little shapes and stuff. And then I was like, all right, the price seems fine to me. It feels like a deluxified ish version of a game. It does 200 of these resources. Those are nice resources to those things. So the price is fine to me. Um, so I feel like you just, you hit me with it right there. Uh, the crafters promise. Now the 115. Typically, I would say <clears throat> we always have to choose. Bowers Law says the most popular pledge level that you're going to have is the one with all the fancy bells and all the fancy whistles. And so I'm looking at these. I can't imagine this is the most popular one. I have not been convinced on your coins. And the bottom line is, you haven't tried to sell me your coins. You haven't zoomed in on your coins. Do you zoom in on your coins at any point? Oh, here they are. It's down here. They have your logo on them. Once again, turn off. And I know why. You can buy them in bulk. You can sell them in the back end. You can sell them with all your games. But as a gamer, I'd rather go theme on it. The box is about six pounds. That's not something to mention to me in the chat. That's something that I'd be slapping me in the face with on this Kickstarter page. Specifically, in the shipping, near the price, near the long, sexy scrolling shot. Like, if you tell me... $89, 200 of these wooden minis, 30 or wooden meat, the wooden components. We're really going 240 chunks of nicely crafted wood. These base plates, which make everything easier. 32 minis, six pounds a game, $89. Boom. I feel like there's, I feel like there's an opportunity here to be a one stop shop to get my money out of my wall. And it's right here. Your videos rock solid videos way better than honestly i would expect it to be on the 247th best project on kickstarter like i imagine if we go look at the 248th and the 246 your video is better than both of them just shot in the dark here uh craft of conquer medieval all applicable stretch schools the city of avalon's mini expansion then this thing what is this thing uh environment tiles expansion so before you hit me with this i feel like you should sell me on it right like, I feel like it should be like a no-brainer. Like, yeah, I'm going to make this jump. Because right now, it's a pretty big jump. What is that, $26? Why am I making the $26 jump for this? And, like, more dice, whatever. I, I can live without the more dice. Also, all the dice fit in the box. That's a super important to know. I'm assuming it's a, obviously a yes. But it's important to know that these will fit in the box. Hopefully, it's in the FAQ. Ugh. 17 FAQ. Hopefully, you organize that like Reload from Colossal Games. Um... All right, so then we have the Inquisitor's Contribution, which includes the metal coins, and this, which includes Fancy Box. Your name will be added to the list of the supporters on the box. Ooh, for 30 Yeah. I can't imagine this is very popular. This is popular if they want to support you. This is a great pledge to have, honestly, because if I want to support you and I want to throw money at you because I, I, I love you or whatever, I'm a good friend of yours, that's a good one to have. But, like... I feel like we're going to see some pledge levels with some very, very low numbers. And when we see that, that means they're not good pledge levels and they could have just been way better off as add-ons. Granted, you don't have that many pledge levels, so I'm not going to knock it too hard. But let, let's get into it. Uh, most popular pledge level. <sighs> Shot in the dark, I'm going to say this one. I really, I'm going to say this one because I just I don't feel like I'm convinced at all. The, I haven't been convinced at all. I don't even know what these are yet. They're not zoomed in. 
I don't know. Let's get to it. So 89, 17. I was wrong. Bowers lost stands. Let's go. 11. Oh, maybe it doesn't. 28. Getting the coins. All right. Base game plus the base game. The, yeah, add on. Just add an extra this much there. Uh, Knight's Vow, six. Oof. These are rough. One? Oh, there was an early bird. That's why these are so low. That makes a lot of sense. And there you go. 3000 bucks. That's why you offer these stupid pledge levels. And I think I even said that to them in the original video. I hate... The like, I hate the idea of this pledge level. Just like, oh my gosh, it seems like such a terrible value. Like, but you put it up there because if anybody takes it, it's a big deal. Also, if you need to artificially put a bunch of money into your thing so you can get it over, you know, the funding goal, you could do that as well. Uh, not insinuating what that's what they did, but a lot of people do that. I, I fudged with the numbers when I was working, when I did my Kickstarter everybody does it let's be adults here uh a single collectible 14k cold plated soldier of your choice at game scale yes can be used to playing a normal game man that's a lot uh the base game plus the base game well, uh, this is weird that it's not uh that it's not in the right spot like right there but once again nobody's taking it anyway it feels i don't know why that's there it seems like an odd one uh then we have 89 so that was the big one. And then 89. Wow. Yeah, that's what I was saying right there. Bowers Law says that this one should be way more popular than that one. And I didn't think it was going to be because you didn't sell it well. Uh, didn't sell it at all, really. I can't even say you didn't sell it well. You didn't sell it at all before you got to the price. We've, we've talked about so much other stuff already. And, and we should have talked about this expansion. Because once again, that was one of the things I even mentioned in the video. That it felt like the environments were pretty blah. Like, it's, oh, it's cool. They're there. I can use them. Like, it could be like, oh, now that you're going to have to go around and your people are going to have to slow down or whatever. But the actual environment itself looked very blah. So I'm wondering if this is going to make it look more exciting, which would make me want it. Like, it, it immediately kind of helped with one of the problems I had with the game. And instead, when we get to the price, it's just like, oh, yeah, buy it. I'm like, eh, I'm cool. And then we have, oh, 130. So they did go with the coins. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Early bird six. All right, great. Night's view, 30. So all of them had early birds okay what was that so the big one was the one with the coins so bowers law i guess still stands <laughs> but the bottom line is what if you watch this channel i always say routinely this pledge right here should have roughly eight to ten percent of your big one and they're nowhere near that which kind of spotlights the fact that yes this is still how consumers want to buy on Kickstarter. They want to throw all the money they can at your project. They want to get all the fancy bells and all the fancy whistles. But you weren't able to capitalize on that as much as you would really hope to be. Because typically 8 to 10 to 1, your deluxe pledge should be over your main one. Um, and I can... Oh, man, that text is so incredibly tiny. Our stretch goal consists of two checkpoints and milestones. So once again, this is why is this here? It feels like it's completely buried. Um, I always say this. I say this all the time when you launch a kickstarter what is your goal your goal is to get funded once you're funded what's your goal your goal is to hit stretch goals you're already funded this is all gravy you can just make your game better you can literally as you hit stretch goals potentially be raising your board game geek score and raising people's opinion about your games every single stretch goal you can because there more more gets added to your game and your game gets better so spotlight that there's a reason that stretch goals are so popular and prevalent now and the reason why people want to complain and moan about them a lot because there's people there's both sides of the fence that's because people love them most of the people really like stretch goals even if they you know there's a vocal there's a vocal group that don't but most people do spotlight them put them up higher get me more excited and it makes your price even easier for me to pallet a new faction card that's huge that's massive that is that's another asymmetric race added to your game and it's buried down here and not only is it buried down here it's not spotlighted in your long sexy scrolling shot that's there's a reason that that's become like the industry standard as soon as you hit an unlock you can now go to that long sexy scrolling shot where you decided not to put your price which i do think was a big misstep um and, and it, it it's like so here's the price and then here's all the game but then it's like oh we've unlocked this a fifth faction card when you only had four before that's a big deal Two more double-sided game tiles added to the base game. Fine. I'd love to zoom in on and see what these are. Like, what is this? Oh, now there's a river. Now there's a thing. Now there's a squirrel. I don't know. I would zoom in on these. These are really small. The text is really small. 
what I'm looking at is really small, and this is supposed to be one of the most exciting spots on your Kickstarter page. Like, it really is. This is Excitement 101, like Exciting Area 101, and it doesn't feel like that. It's small, it feels diminished, it feels buried, and yes, it's over here, it's organized, but just the natural flow. You know, I don't feel like most people click, I feel like most people scroll. Now, granted, everybody scrolls to different spots, but still, uh, I feel like this should totally be higher and, and bigger. Uh, two more action cards added to the base game, cool. Two more double-sided game tiles added to the base game, cool. Two more objective cards added to the base game. This is all good stuff. Plastic trays. Wow, that's a banger. Once again, that gets me more excited about your game. That gets me more excited about your game. And I can be more excited about your game all the way up here. Because let's really look at it from this point of view. If I am at this point in your Kickstarter, I probably decided if I'm going to purchase or not. We still have to get to shipping. And shipping could kill you for some people. But most of the time, I don't think it probably will. Just because most people that are shopping on Kickstarter are used to spending hundreds of dollars. But these plastic trays, this is a big deal. Put this big deal up higher. Do not bury it this far down on the page. And look, once again, we look over here. We are now, what, like 68, maybe 70% down the page. That's what you're saying how important this piece of information is to people. And I strongly disagree. Strongly disagree especially on Kickstarter. Extra action cards, extra faction cards, extra objective cards. Those are great. Engraved dice. Don't care. Extra player expansion. That's a banger, but it's so far down. Yeah, we're putting it in the solo co-op mode. Oh, I think I recommended to this that they hide this. Uh, I did. I think I did because it looks so incredibly cart in front of the horse. You ask for $8,500, and now you're like, well, if we hit $250,000, why don't you give me your million-dollar stretch goal too? Why stop at 250000 It's not a good look, I don't think. Um, and I think there's a reason that most people don't just say, here's everything. They're like, all right, we're going to cut it off here. Maybe you'll see two extra ones. Yeah. So, and then now, now we're, this is the first time we've talked about the environment tiles expansion, which once again is something that you want to sell. Like, like this is, uh, the land of Talmar filled with diverse biomes across a vast landscape. Cool. Four desert tiles, four tundra tiles. I'm more excited about your tiles now, but I didn't get to do that because you didn't spotlight it to me. I almost feel like the video would have been the way to do that. Yeah, I really do. You wonder, like, why are we spotlighting the sea creatures? I can't buy the sea creatures. Is that the one million? Maybe that's the one million dollar stretch goal, the sea creatures, but I can't buy those sea creatures. Those sea creatures are so far in the future. This game is March 2025. Those sea creatures are at the earliest, probably March 2027 or something. Why are you showing me sea creatures when I could see the, the desert and this? And like, it doesn't have to be fancy 3D rendering or anything like that. It could just be like, by the way, make sure you get the, like, yeah. I feel like this was not sold well at all. And honestly, I, I haven't been doing point ups or point downs. Uh, I'm going to go with a, a point, third point grade bump down on this. I am. Uh, just because two thirds. I think I'm going to go two thirds. Just the shopping area I don't think is great. And then I think you spotlighting your logo so darn much is not. I said darn. I meant damn. Uh, so damn much it's just not great either and i said it right from the jump is one of the first thing i said why do i need your logo in the bottom right hand corner it's being redundant why do i need your logo on the shields why do i need your logo on the coins i understand it from a business perspective but from a gameplay perspective i'm like thanks for ripping me out of the theme and i know it's a minor minor thing but let me know what you think about that in the, the comments down below uh wooden dice add on fine whatever heroes add on what is this the heroes added completely changes the outcome of a game. Their added abilities and extra. What the heck is this? Where is this? What? Why is this not in any of the pledge levels? Why is this just a random add-on? Why isn't this spotlighted along with this? That's a third of a point grade bump down there. I don't even remember this, honestly. I don't remember this from when I did the the, the, kick, the other Kickstarter video. What? This is terrible. This is absolutely terrible. This is like when you find a crucial rule in a board game in like an example or something where it's like, why is this crucial rule over here? What the hell are you doing? And we've all found that board game rule booklet where you're like, oh yeah, make sure you read over there. Check the most recent update. Okay, that's fine. 
Most people are not going to be checking your most recent update, though. Most people who browse your Kickstarter page, I've already. They're not just going to be like, all right, let's go read the updates. Like this is something that it should. Yeah, this is this is great. This is what I want as a gamer. This is asymmetry. This hero adds on completely changes the outcome of the game. That's something. The way you pitched it makes me want even more. There are added abilities and extra objective points. Yeah, and then once again, it's an add-on as well. There's not just like an all-in. And I'm not. I'm not recommending you add the all-in this late in the game or anything like that. But it's like ugh, these pledge levels are just not ideal. Uh, how to play a hero card? But then again, they are pretty evenly spaced out. So I will give them that. Except for well, except for that one. That one is yeah. That one's not really spaced out. But they are the you know 89, 89, 100 something. So I can't knock that. Uh, extra player expansion. Stop telling me about it. <laughs> like I've heard more about your extra player expansion than I've than I've heard about the stuff that I can actually buy. And especially the salt, like, yeah, like you're just rubbing, they're like, like, hey, you know, you want these things. It's like, no, we're not hitting them. To be honest, they were a VIP feature that wasn't supposed to be in this campaign, but we added them as an update. Ah, I don't know what a VIP feature means. Uh, attention, estimated shipping, attention UK and EU backers. The price will be reduced by almost 70% per country if 300 more EU backers support this project. Same for the UK. That's nice to know. Uh, it's good stuff. Here's how it'll work. Okay. Uh, where's the price? <laughs> I don't feel like I really need that much information about it. I guess the the EU and UK people do. Uh, it's a 19 to 23 bucks. So, oh, no, I'm East Coast. So 28 to 30. Yeah, that's what I remember. That's what I remember. I remember that shipping was rough. Did you tell me there was a six-pound box anywhere? Yeah, that's something I'd mention. And once again, that's something that I'd mention when I saw that price. See, Goody, I can't afford a lawyer. Sue yourself and just give me the money, please. As of right now, we're fulfilling all orders from our hub. Actually, my sister, she works for an attorney's office. So I ever really needed to. You ever really want to step up to me, I could probably get a lawyer on the cheap. As of right now, we'll be fulfilling our orders from the hub in the United States of America. Yeah, so right now, that's a big price jump. That's a big price jump. That's a 33% price jump. And now instead of looking at a $90 game, we're looking at a $120 game. Ooh, it's a hard sell. It's a hard sell for me a little bit. Uh... Man, why is the shipping so rough? And maybe it's because the box is big. I don't know. Like, because it looks like it's like a medium flat rate shipping box. And also, there's different pledge levels, too. As, as for the coins? I don't know. It's always annoying when there's more than one pledge level and there's only one shipping price, though. That's, that's Refresh the page and check above, uh, right above the what's in the box. I added the weight. Awesome. Awesome. I think that's good. Let's see how it looks. Woo. Updated on the fly. That's fun. <laughs> Let's see. Wait. Boop, 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 Oh, my gosh. So far. So far. What's the box? Six pounds. That looks good. That does look good. I'm telling you. I think the price should be good there. Hit me with the price. Six pound game. 90 bucks. Then I'm like, all right. And hopefully you convince me before I get to the shipping. This is one of the few times I'd be like, yeah, I'd hide the shipping. Typically, I'm a pound my chest about why isn't the shipping? Like, I believe the shipping should typically be with everything else in the shopping area. But with how bad your shipping price is, I, I kind of am like, yeah, you kind of do want to hide this. It doesn't feel like a good shipping price at all. Um, and I'm sure there's like, we're trying, like, how large is this box? Like, is this like, could it fit into a medium a medium like usps box like what are the what are those what are those because just it doesn't feel like a good price at all it feels like an objectionably bad price um for the shipping new to kickstarter probably not can't imagine unless they're friends of yours wow 62 huh that looks uh Alex, uh, Alex, that's a really large number. <laughs> that's a really large number, which has me scratching my head. Makes me wondering what you're doing so well to bring in new people. Like that's that's really high. How high is it, Forest? Well, let's take a look. See, this is Mythwin. Mythwin has raised two hundred eighty-three thousand dollars. It has three thousand backers, and they have. 47 new backers to your 62 and the other thing that makes it look extra suspicious is the fact that it's not like they're all from a certain area 
Like, if there was, like, 22 from, like, Minnesota, I'd be like, oh, cool. They got, like, a really local gaming community that, like, is banding together. It's like when we see France crushing it. It's like, go France. This one just looks like they're fudging the numbers in the back end, which would also partially explain that 247th in the popularity. It is what it is. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that shipping, man, that's rough. That shipping's rough. Uh, the real aha moment came from stuff. Feudal. Ooh, is Feudal, is Feudal that, uh, is Feudal that deck building one? I really like Feudal if it is. Long pack games. Cool. Ugh, Jalop. Gross. <laughs> Gross. I hate Jalop so much. Uh, I would love to know your opinion. Hey, yeah, you're in here. Luke, what do you think about the experience with Jalop? I personally trash on Jalop all the live long day. I would love to know your thoughts on Jalop because this is from someone who actively is using Jalop or use Jalop right now. What's your thoughts on your experiences with Jalop? Would you do them again with this? I feel like that's the, that's the big question. Would you use Jalop on your next project? I'd love to know that. Uh, so yeah, there's the page right there. Man, man. I wanted to say how much is it was fine, but then we get to that shipping. It's rough. It's real rough. Ooh, no. Okay. So I would I would go look at Reload from Colossal Games. There's a lot of other companies that have started to copy this format. This is a really annoying and ugly FAQ. If my question's number 16, then I have to go through 16 questions to get to it. Why do we use crowdfunding? You don't need to answer that. You don't need to answer that because we're a first-time game designer and we don't want to lose our house. Everybody gets this. Like this is uh, why is the Champions Oath pledge so expensive? Uh, it's, it's like yeah, these are a lot of questions that you don't need to answer. And I think this one kind of like reeks of the hey, go look. And this is what I always recommend everybody: go look at five to ten active projects right now that are board games. If you're launching a board game, and just look at everything. Take notes of what you like, what you dislike, because I would be willing to bet that if you go look at most of them, these are not typical questions, some of them, that 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 people are asking. And so is, is this a fully cooperative game? Is there a solo mode? No, it's not, unless you get a whole boatload of money. Got it. Okay. Updates. Big reveal. A new add-on. EU shipping price updates. Upcoming stories and Q&A podcast. A surprise add-on for all. But it's like... This is great. Oh, there's even a video? Oh. Ooh, yeah. Uh, too fast. Too fast. Not helpful. Yep, not helpful. I did kind of get the gist there, actually. Okay, cool. Was helpful. Uh, it took me a minute. You had me there. You had me in the first half, then you got me. Uh, shipping for UK. It, yeah, I put that higher. I put that way higher. Uh, it sucks that it's an add-on. It really does. It's annoying that it's an add-on, but I want that. I inevitably want that. 100%. It adds replayability to the game. It adds more, it just adds to the game, period. In Coming Stories, it's just playing a series of short series to delve deeper into the factions, feature the base game. Yeah, whatever. Uh, I, I, I didn't feel, I don't feel like theme is the thing that's going to be like, man, this, this gripping theme, especially, you know, with what seems to be just a generic dudes on a map, kill each other, go mine stuff kind of thing. Is this, is this familiar to the minis hero expansion for VIP backers? That's a great question. Yes, this is the exact same. If you reserved a VIP reward before the campaign, then you would already get this as part of your pledge. We wanted to open up the opportunity to a higher price for all non-VIP members. Ah, got it. Just feels like you lied to the VIP members because in the emails you said, and I quote, you'll be one of the first to know when our campaign goes live so you can take advantage of our your VIP Heroes mini expansion exclusive only to VIPs. Ooh, Ooh, you did a tasty menstrual games there. Oh no. <laughs> and if you don't know what that reference means, tasty menstrual games, stupidly, very stupidly. And this is coming from two separate people who worked at tasty menstrual games. Not my words, their words. We're like, deluxification, never again. And on a very popular game. And then they're like, oh, crap, why did we say that? That's. Mm. <sighs> Those are bar big words. If you haven't already, make sure you upgrade to a VIP status. This ensures you get an exclusive copy of our VRP expansion, which is only for you as a VIP. This will not be available to purchase during or after the campaign. It will be gone forever. Oh, third of a point grade bump down. It looks bad, but thank you, William, for dragging this out because it's important. You got to hold people accountable. That is 100% you lying. Like, there's no other way to read around that. That's ugly. That's bad. That's ooh, ooh. Which makes it seem like more of a money grab than offering to everyone. And then here's the other thing, too. Like, why? <laughs> like, why would you do it? Because in theory, you're funded. 
right? If we're if we're not assuming that you're fudging with the numbers, which at this point I actually kind of am. Like I'm honest in this segment. You have more new backers, like fifth, like twenty five percent more than a project that is massively way over what you're doing. Yeah, that's one of the telltale signs. Thanks for replying. That does bring up a good point. I'd be happy to clarify. Just today we discussed this with our VIP members on our Facebook VIP group. We took a vote whether or not to offer it at a higher price point. Cool, cool, cool. This is why you should read before you run your mouth, Forrest. <laughs> but I love running my mouth. Uh, oh, sorry. But, but hey, that's why I say tape backsies. Offer it at a higher price to non-VIP members. This was met with overwhelmingly positive comments to go ahead. Honestly, yes. I kind of agree with that now because the people in that group want to hit stretch goals. They want to hit the stretch goals, which you're not spotlighting very well. So I get it. I get it. We didn't feel VIPs were slighted in any way. Well, you know what? You know what? You mentioned that first and foremost here. So yeah, this is just a tactical misstep in my part. Let's let's play spin doctor here. How would I how would Forrest have spun this? It's really quite simple. You say after a vote in our VIP exclusive Facebook group, it was overwhelming that we should bring this out. So his question is immediately answered. He now knows about this VIP group and he's not here spending the time and the mental capital to type out you know, this paragraph because he sees, oh, okay, I get it now. I just wasn't a part of that vote. Like, it's just a little thing like that that you could have done to get in front of this. You should have known that people were not going to be happy about this, at least a small minority of people. And you did, I think, handle it in a good way, but I would mention that right from the beginning of that update. To be clear, I don't feel slighted at all. I was not part of the Facebook group vote, but I just wanted to be sure it was at the say, uh, was the same as all. I'm still very excited. Yeah, that's it. Like, as soon as you said that, the entire situation changes, and if you would have said that right from the jump, it shows me a couple things. First, you've got an active, involved community. Second, you're reaching out to your active, involved community. Third, you're trying to make this game as good as possible so you can make more money to hit stretch goals. Like, those are all good things that could have been conveyed there. Instead, it looks really bad there. Once again, you had me at halftime, and then you got me. So I'm glad that it's not as bad as it looks there, but it's sh like what oh no it's no they're so far away from it why why hey all we're excited about the progress for campaign stuff uh well said appreciate your openness and transparency and kudos to your artistic abilities paired with well-crafted game mechanics like that's it's just so far away like you gotta we gotta be realistic here you're two you're two hundred thousand dollars away from that you're on your first project smaller bites smaller bites i think um or at least don't show me all the food in your mouth that's uneaten this is a weird analogy moving on to the comments if you don't reach the stretch goals five to six of the will be made available as an add-on to the pledge major no uh milestones are major additions to the core game most milestones will be included in the core game however there will sell we'll unlock content blah 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 um Actually, we still plan to get the extra players expansion produced, just not in the initial campaign. It is slightly possible it would become available very late in the pledge manager if the funding was established, but we couldn't promise on that. We want to be as honest as possible. Uh, the extra player expansion is literally half the game over again, which is still costly to produce considering the MOQ of 1500 Okay. That's a... That's a... Yeah. That's a... That's... You know, you say... The, that's because you chose long pack games. I mean... It's not fifteen hundred everywhere. It's five hundred where I work. No, granted, we wouldn't. We probably wouldn't do your game because the minis and whatnot. But there's other places. I, I'd, I'd just be interested to know how much you shopped around too. Um, but it is good, and I would say minimum order quantity, because not everybody knows what the MOQ is. It's just little things like that. We hope that answers your concerns. We were presiding thing, but yeah, that makes sense. You know, you don't want to. I get it. What are the card holders on the starting tiles made of plastic or wood? They're actually made of wood. We are thankful because that really keeps the aesthetic looking old-fashioned. What about the map tiles? Are those woods just punch board? They're standard punch board, cool stuff, things. I would mention that. Was it not mentioned? Let's go back to the uh, to that once again. You know, that's that's a nice deluxified component because that's honestly the only thing I remember. <laughs> One of the few things I remember when I was coming back. Oh, yeah, that, that really cool wood holder thing that, once again, not necessary but looks really cool. Is it wood here? Bueller? 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 Four starting tiles. Yeah. Wood starting tiles. That's a deluxified component. Spotlighted. I mean, you're, you're putting out a $90 game. You're going 50% higher than MSRP. Go spotlight those deluxified components. Um, Just fun and cool stuff. Thanks. Rewards. Okay. Final grade. Let's get out of here. Do I want it? 
I prefer the running your mouth 180 turnaround. I do too. Honestly, that's why I love to come into these as blind as possible because sometimes I just put my foot in my mouth and I even laugh about how much I put my foot in my mouth. <laughs> All right. Do I want it? Yes, I do. I feel like once again, the video is one of the best aspects of this. And I feel like the video could have been better. I feel like we could have showcased. Yeah, this like this is so cart in front of the horse. I get it. You want to be like, oh, yeah, cool. This is the thing stuff. No, show me the like show me more of this. You showed me a box. That's what you showed me in the video, a box. I want to know why they're different. Nitpicks. Do I want it? Yes, I do. Can you do it? Yes. Here's why. You're being very transparent about how much you actually need to make stuff. Oh, yeah. We can't make this thing unless we have $150,000. We can't make this thing unless we have $200,000. Yeah, that's what I want to hear. <laughs> because when you say, yeah, well, we can just make it. And then I'm like, well, you've only have X number of dollars. And now you're telling me you're going to be producing three boxes at 15. Like, it's where I start to get more concerned. That being said, I still think it's a bad look. I think it's really, really cart in front of the horse. And I remember saying that in the pre-launch video, and I, I still feel it now. Let me know what you think about that. But cart in front of the horse that much, especially for a first-time publisher, it is scary. There's been a lot of publishers who have gone over, under because they have taken a way bigger bite, and they've assumed that things were going to play out a certain way, and they didn't play out a certain way. And when you take a big bite, it can end everything really quickly. I'm not insinuating that's what's going to happen here. In fact, I think the exact opposite, but I think showcasing that much, I don't think it was a great play. And then how much is it? It's fine. It's fine. It's a fine price until we got to the shipping. And then I'm like, oh man. And then I'm saying to myself like, man, 33% of the shipping. And maybe it's just because I don't know the size of the box fully. But yeah it doesn't feel like a good price so how much is it i'm gonna go with the check minus it does like it feels i guess it feels kickstarter reasonable the very tail end of kickstarter reasonable because it is still 120 bucks for a deluxified version of the game there's 32 minis there's 200 pieces of wood i need to keep saying that in my head there's 32 minis there's 200 pieces of wood they are not cmon cmon has ruined everything for everyone when it comes to pricing so at the end of the day final grade is i think about mid 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 somewhere in the mid Let's look at that main image again. See? I think right in the middle. I think the video did a lot of heavy lifting. So we're just starting to see. Shipping section, that sucks. Third of a point grade bump down. Just, just, that is sticker shock. It's bad sticker shock. You hit it in the bottom, which I think was a good idea. Yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm right around C. Right in the middle. A lot of stuff I like, a lot of stuff I don't like. I'm excited about this, but once again, it's so far in the future. And it's it, it's so far in the future. Not only is it so far in the future, it's so far in the future behind stuff that I actually want now. I want the solo co-op mode now. I want to know what the solo looks like. That's a huge thing. I feel like, honestly, this would have been a game that would have been better off had it just... They just said it's one to six players. It was just like, here, here's the box. It's got everything. Um... But I don't know. Let me know what you think about them in the comments below. But by final grade, I think I'm going to go right in the middle with the C. Craft and Conquer Medieval, an epic strategy board game. I don't care they're fudging the numbers, but if you do, it definitely looks like they might be there. Uh, but let me know in the comments below what's your final grade. And as always, if you're enjoying the content, please be sure to click on the subscribe button down below. Bye-bye.